No, those are not alum. Obina here happens to be one of our alum, and we are very delighted to introduce him today to you. Uh, before we dive into the main conversation for today, uh, let me quickly read uh, Mr. Obiana, Obina uh, Echendu a uh, brief bio uh, before we give him the floor to share his word of experience with us. All right. Mr. Ob Obina Echendu has expertise in helping individuals project a captivating personnel Persona and helping the fashion industry reimagine the ways fashion is created, assessed, and distributed across Africa and beyond. He serves as a founder, CEO of Roya Santoria Africa Limited, a fashion design and wardrobe management company, providing exceptional fashion assemblies that project class and style. He also co-founded and led a tech startup team developing solutions to catalyze and accelerate the transformation of the fashion industry in Africa. Like you can see, uh, Obina involving fashion is to bring new ideas to market that can enhance lives while craving to be, to be a delight and resource to the people within the network. Ladies and gentlemen, let's put our hands together to formally welcome all being a, a change. Uh, Mr. Obina Echendu, we are delighted to have you on our platform. We believe that this is your first time on our program. And we're already excited uh, to have you and we cannot wait to hear from you. Please, can you quickly uh, take, on from, uh, take on the conversation from there and tell us a little bit of anything that we might have skipped in the course of reading your brief bio and maybe dive into the conversation and the topic for today. I believe that a lot of our audience are so eager to hear from you already. Thank you so much, Obina Echendu, for coming on our program. Over to you. Thank you so much, sir. Uh, it's a very exciting opportunity to be here and to share with all of you. I'm super delighted for this, and I'm very hopeful that uh, you're going to get value from the uh, nuggets and insights that will be shared today. Um, not to go too much over my myself, um, I play in the fashion space, but I'm very interested in uh, helping other small businesses uh, take off and, you know, in, in the process of trying to get started in business, there are a few fundamental principles uh, that I have learned over the period of time uh, as a business person, and I believe every young person, or no matter, you know, your demography, trying to start off in business, you need those principles to succeed. So these principles cut across, but I'm going to be speaking directly to a target audience, which are would-be entrepreneurs, aspiring entrepreneurs, or people who are just getting started. Even though uh, those who are established in business or on that path of entrepreneurship would learn one or two things, this particular presentation is tailored you know, for people who are just getting off the ground, particularly because you know, uh, we need more entrepreneurs to help even stabilize our uh, national economy because like everyone knows, entrepreneurship is a driving, excuse me, uh, entrepreneurship is one of the core driving uh, force to development in any economy. So today we're going to be speaking about ideation. So I titled it, you know, in line with the theme for this session, get an ideation right, the playbook. Uh, Sir, please, you should help me run through the slides because of our time. I want to crunch everything within this slide within in the next uh, 25 minutes. So in the table of contents, uh, 
introduction. We've already gone over that. Uh, what it is, what is the win? It literally speaks to defining things from the get-go. And we're going to be looking at how you select right ideas. And the most exciting part, which serves as a foundation for everything we are going to be speaking on today, ideation life cycle. Then we move to planning for your business, business goals, and business model. Then we come to the conclusion of you know, my thoughts for today. Uh, to make this a bit interactive, I would want to encourage everyone in the different centers across the country to uh, make two of the chat uh, box and you know, put in your questions if there are any areas where you require clarification, you know, uh, or if you get an aha moment in the, in, in the course of my presentation. I would really be happy to see your reaction. You know, uh, uh, if you want to use the emojis or any of such, please do well and, you know, engage in the comment session. I, I also want to encourage you to, you know, pull out your notebook and pen and take note because uh, along the line, you would find some very insightful nuggets that will be flying around. And I really hope that I am able to speak to, you know, your areas of interest and specifically to the principles that can help you, you know, uh, start out on the right footing. What is the win? I'm going to skip the introduction because uh, I've been, you know, introduced already. But just so you have, you know, a better understanding, um, I play in the fashion space, and my core mission is to help individuals embody the persona that others admire, uh, and that speaks to, you know, uh, people being able to present themselves you know, in such a way that your audience cannot look away. Um, imagine walking into places and people want to relate with you, network with you, and interact with you because you embody that persona that they admire. Uh, but I'll dive straight into the course of our presentation because we have so limited time to deal with this very important you know, topic. Now, what is the win? For this presentation, my win is to help you understand the importance of ideation because it serves as the foundation for any business that you see out there or that you are going to be launching. And what is ideation? Ideation I have, you know, defined to be an emergence of thought pre-processed using an integrated technique of turning either a visual concrete or abstract thoughts into actionable, you know, uh, ideas that can become a business. Every time you see a business out there or you interact with business owners, don't just imagine that the business started off, you know, without this process called ideation. I know people sometimes interchangeably use the concept or the word ideation, referencing to the concept in different lights. This in itself is a topic that we can sit here for a whole week trying to dissect. 
Because imagine someone who wants to build a house and doesn't lay a solid foundation for the building. What would happen is likely that when it rained or when there is a fierce wind, the house would collapse. To better explain this, have you heard about the, the, the concept of building a sandy castle? Every time people go to the beach, you see young children, you know, trying to mold a, a, a structural building structural building that looks magnificent in their, sometimes coming from their imagination, sometimes from a picture of what they have seen, they're trying to build that structure on the sand or with the sand on the beach, right? After a while, when this wind blows, and the water from the ocean flows through the beach. It sweeps off that castle that the child is trying to build. That's because that does not have a foundation. The same thing applies in life. If you do not have a solid foundation for your business in a period of time that business would collapse. I love this quote by W.J. Cameron that says money never starts an idea. It is the idea that starts the business that brings the money. When you see people succeeding out there, you think, oh, this is how they came about this effort, this effort, this you know uh, abundance that they are enjoying. But no, they've gone through a process called ideation, which is a lean approach, a methodology or a framework that can help you get a great business. When we move to the next slide, I'm gonna be showing you the three fundamental things that you need to register in your mind on your quest to launch in a business. The ideation is your foundation. The business plan serves as the structure that is required for that business. And if I could define this in simple terms, if I come to business model, ideation is the emergence of a thought pre-processed using an integrated technique of turning either a visual, concrete, or abstract thought into an actionable you know, idea that then can birth a business. After you have gotten this, you move to, you know, like I am using the analogy of building a house. After you have laid the foundation, you begin to erect the pillars that then holds the structure, which is going to be done through your business plan. A business plan is simply a written document that describes in detail what the business does, how the business is going to run to achieve your goals and objective in a defined manner. Then, if you have built the structure, you can't live in that house yet, right? Because if you attempt to, when the rain comes, that rain is going to beat you right inside your house. But to avoid that, even in your business, you need to develop a business model, which is simply essentially the ways your business plans to make money. Think about the beautiful houses 
you see out there. You know the structure of where you are in the different American spaces right now. You agree with me that those buildings have foundations, have structures which are the walls. You might not see the pillar necessarily because they are covered in the walls. Then it has a roof, either a decking or, or, or a, a roofing sheet overboard. Next slide, please. This is to tell you that, you know, to build a successful business, you need those three key elements in place because they would help determine whether this, your business would succeed or not. I guess you refers to the whole creative process of generating developing and communicating your ideas. When you go through this process, you get to understand how your business would be better served for your audience or for those around you or for those who are watching. Next slide. This whole process, I'm going to dissect it in the ideation life map. This is a concept that you run through as a lean approach to understanding what it takes to get an idea that thrives. Most of us would have heard about the lean methodology approach especially for those who are in the tech space or who are looking to build a tech startup. There are other methodologies out there. The business model canvas also speaks in a way to this concept from a different approach. But this ideation life map is a methodology or a framework that I develop specifically to help aspiring entrepreneurs or would be entrepreneurs understand how to get ideas. Speaking about getting new ideas, you know, in existing organization, people might think, you know, of this differently because, you know, they are either getting the new idea to you know, support an existing business or to launch a new product. That approach is valid. However, it's different. When you have not gone to business school, when you have not been trained, you know, uh, by a business school or other, through other means, it's a bit difficult to understand how great ideas are better. So let me break it down for a layman to understand this concept. And I say, every day we have thoughts going through our minds. Sometimes we are watching things or we are just moving around and you know, you just resonate with something or something would you know, hit and you would find insight in that you know, in, in that observation or in the conversations you're having, and you're beginning to look at it as, oh, can this thing become viable business? Oftentimes, it just doesn't work that way. When you get an aha moment and you quickly want to say, oh, these things that I have heard about, seen, or, you know, learned about can make me X amount of money. That thought really have to be processed. And the process of selecting and identifying which of your thoughts you should rely on isn't an easy task at all because it requires some level of concentration. When thoughts crosses your mind, you're wondering if those thoughts can become a viable 
business idea. You are supposed to then trans transform that thought into something that can be felt in tangible manner, in tangible form, through a process of transformation which can make that thought become a product or a service. The next stage of this process is conceptualization, where you scrutinize that particular thought and form it to become solid. So, for example, if on my way here, I had, you know, I was stopped in, in traffic and it took me longer hours to travel to a two miles, you know, journey. In my, my mind, I'll begin to wonder what can be done about the traffic situation in my city, right? Ordinarily, people will say, oh, eliminate this, uh, take off, uh, um, fix the bad road, you know, take off the bottlenecks that are on our travel path and all of that. That's how we think about things at the primary level. If I really want to solve that problem, right, I can then transform that thought into a concept and process it further to say, okay, what do I have to do to make a move from just worrying over the problem to really understanding what this problem entails. This will prepare me to, be, to begin to research further, to ask questions, and in the bid to re research, you, you want to ask questions, you want to, you know, ask other motorists, ask other, you know, mot uh, road users, ask, you know, um, uh, people who even walk, you know, within that space, be it a uh, government agency, uh, who, you know, either serves as law, last mile, uh, the police, to just better understand the problem. You want to investigate that problem so that whatsoever solution you want to come up with would fit to solve the problem. Oftentimes, the error that I see a lot of people take is, you know, they come up with solutions in their head without necessarily understanding the problem, and they bring the solution to want to solve the problem, and only realizes that, you know, that's not the problem in the first place. So you want to make sure you research to understanding the pain points of other motorists or road users who you want to attempt to solve the problem for. From this point, you want to then conduct a visibility study that would help you ensure you are able to solve not just the problem, but your solution solves a pain point that prior to you, you know, introducing this concept or your business or you know the value you want to offer the users were really struggling. You want to test this by conducting the due diligence, you know, and understanding that the solution you're coming up with is really tackling a problem. Once you have gone through this process automatically you are going to be interacting with the people who you are attempting to solve the problem for, which gives you the avenue to validate your idea. You're validating to understand the why your idea would serve. So by the time you create a product or a service, your validation comes from understanding that, oh, the motorists, want to spend less travel time on their 
commute. So if your solution is to provide a faster means of transportation in a city like Lagos, a cable, a cable cab would travel faster than a taxi. A cable cab would travel faster within the metropolis than the train. So that solution can only be validated in the process of you know, testing your hypothesis, testing you know, those theories that you have in your mind. Once you have been able to validate this, you want to incubate these thoughts because it's almost at the point of delivery. Think about what the uh, conceptual process of giving birth to a baby looks like from the point of pregnancy to the delivery date. The same approach, you know, you can go through with your thoughts and run through the process to birth an idea that becomes a business. So after this session, to help you hold on to you know the lessons that you will pick from this session, I would advise that you know you reflect on that process from pregnancy to delivery or what it takes to build a house. Next slide. Ideation without execution is a delusion. I love this as a caveat for people to understand that, that you have a beautiful idea does not guarantee that you would have a successful business. Else, you know, the, the saying that ideas rule the world would have become, you know, uh, what everybody relies on to hit fat checks and huge bank accounts. But no, it requires another process, which is in the analogy of trying to build a house after the foundation, you need to then build the structure that gives the house the right shape. And that speaks to your business plan. Yes, you have given birth to the idea through the ideation life cycle process. Now you need to flesh up that idea so that you can better present your business. And what is a business plan? This is simply documenting your business processes around the idea that you have in such a way that you can either communicate it to other people, you can use it as a reflection board to yourself, and use it as a guiding compass to navigate your entrepreneurial journey. So we're going to be looking at what is business plan, why do you need one, and key component required in a business plan. Next slide. What is a business plan? Like I said, it is basically interpreting your thoughts in writing. The process which your business would provide value either through your offerings as a product or services to communicate how you are offering that value and how in return you're going to be extracting value in the process. Why is this needed? It will serve as your map. It acts as a compass that provides direction to avoid costly mistakes. 
it's also going to serve as a manual for you. Your business plan is a manual that can inspire creative ways to offer your products or your services. Your business plan is also like your dashboard. Imagine driving, you know, from point A to point C and your tires, one, one or two of your tires, you know, is punctured. While you're driving, you can't, you know, hit the brake and go and check because you will not just know until you look at your dashboard to notice what has gone wrong. So the business plan serves as a base to developing an action plan for execution. Talk about your strategy, talk about you know, the key approach you want to take to solving the problems of your customers or your users. Your business plan is going to you know, cover all of those details. And it also serves as an engine. Of course, you, know, you require oil to, to, to service your engine and make it work effectively. So it is easy to make decisions you know, by looking at your business plan. Let's go to the next slide. The key components required in any business plan, especially for starters, speaks to your strategies. This simply describe the how to achieve all the goals and objectives that you have. Then operations, describe your back end processes that is required for you to achieve your goals. If you don't document all of these things, you might be struggling in trying to run a successful business. Your financial model shows an overview of all of the costs that you would incur, the revenue structures that you have in place, and the projections that you have in mind for the business. Then another key component is a market insight of the particular industry that you play in. You want to do a proper analysis of the market, understanding the total of available market, you know, uh, understand, you know, which fraction of this market that you should focus on. Because of our time, we'll be running through the slides, you know, uh, faster. So bear with me. Uh, but I'm also happy to share this slide after now. How to write a business plan? My tips will be that it is easy to make one. All it takes is the willingness to focus on it. There is no one size fits all or correct answers to what a business plan document should look like. It is not a cast in stone document that all oh, you have to be rigid about. No, you have to update the document as your business or industry evolves. But very important things to focus on are your vision, markets, Analysis, execution plan, your first draft, you know, uh, after you've drafted it, seek feedback either from, you know, a peer review session or from your colleagues or even from the customers that you're trying to serve. Then you would have your final draft that eventually, you know, will be your guiding document to your business launch. You want to also define your goal from the get-go, right? You want to know what is the win for you, for the business. Do you want to become a, a unicorn? You want to become a billion-dollar business? 
uh, what is the win for your business? Business goal, you know, are, are the basic outcomes that you want your business to accomplish. Anyone at any stage in business can set business goals, you know, but the form might differ, although there are generally guided by an overall mission. So, for example, as a young uh, business owner, your goal might be to hit 10 million in one quarter. That 10 million goal is a revenue goal. You want to register that you me, know, in me. mind and Thank you. You want to register that business goal, that revenue goal, and you know work towards it by you know strategically executing what you have laid out in your business plan document. You can set launch goal, target goal, revenue goal, you know, profit margin goal, metrics goal. You can even set dream goals and abstract goals. Well, all of this should take a smart form so that you're not beating around the bush. So think about, you know, uh, uh, footballers and uh, those who play soccer. If you see a number of people in the soccer pitch running around, without knowing where the goalpost is, they would all just be wasting their time. But because there's a goalpost, everybody are running in a particular direction. Every team, you know, in particular, are running in a particular direction because they want to see the ball go into the net. That is in front of them. In the same way, your business goes you know, should help you know the direction that you're running at. The next slide. Next slide, please. You set and achieve your goals, you know, uh, by first understanding that you have a goal, write out that goal to be clear so that you know where the goal post is. Then you focus on the goal, like I illustrated using the soccer game, you, you know where the goal post is, you're running in that direction, you know, you're working with your team, effectively passing the ball around, you know, and uh, understanding, you know, which direction to kick the ball at, which in your business is understanding and documenting the processes that you go through, you know, and leveraging existing system like technology, uh, the means that you know would help your particular business, depending on the peculiarity of the business and the industry you play in, you want to leverage those existing systems and seek support, look for communities, you know, uh, find a way to plug yourself into, you know, a community of other entrepreneurs, start up, you know, uh, founders uh, or people, you know, are thinking like you do so that they can help you, you know, navigate across on the process of building your business. The next slide. Once you have set a goal, please go to the next slide. You have to become conscious of what it takes to achieve that goal. And that's why you walk through to developing a business model. Every goal you set in your business, right, will amount to nothing if your business does not make money. And business models speak essentially to the ways that your business is going to make money. If you 
are creating values. And the value is offered as a product or service. How do you communicate that value so that people will be willing to pay in exchange for the value? <coughs> as we begin to wrap up, business model speaks to those essential ways, channels, and avenues through which your business is going to make money. For example, I run a fashion business. And on, typically, if you know a tailor, you would say, hey, they are going to help you make a clothes, right? And it is the clothes that they make for you that you're going to pay for, right? But how to tell us, like myself or anybody out there, help you see the value we are offering beyond the cloth that we're making for you so that you can offer us premium for either the products or our service. It is for us business owners to think through the best way to communicate this and the best form to serve this value. One way is to create a subscription model where for me as a, you know, uh, a tailor, I would say to you that if you make three clothes, I will charge you X amount instead of X. So to explain it in numbers, if a cloth costs 20,000 Naira, and if I make 20,000 Naira across 20 people, that would amount to 200,000 Naira. Sorry, 400,000 Naira. How many efforts do I have to make? How much effort do I have to make to reach the 20 people? Instead of pursuing that goal in the approach, I can say to myself, now why not sell three to one person or five of the product to one person and say, I offer you a discount. If you buy off five at a go, instead of you paying 100,000 Naira, I will charge you 75,000 Naira and offer you a discount so that you're taking off the burden of me looking for four other persons to buy you know, the number of products that I have to sell. Or I can say to you, every month, let's create a package for you. Instead of you, you know, uh, going over this conversation every now and then, let's plan it out in the year. How many clothes do you want? Uh, and I say, hey, I would offer this clothes to you every month and cover for your yearly wardrobe plan. If that doesn't work for you, we can keep it at transactional level. I end part the service that I offer. Or I take the job off and give it to other service provider and get a commission from it. Depending on the nature of your business and the industry you play in, for people who are in the tech space, for example, uh, most of the apps that we use are free. How do they make their money? Freemium model, you know, allow people to first use your service for free, but pay for the upgraded version. So you want to withhold 
some of the values that you have to offer and allow people at a taste of what you have to offer when they are satisfied to a point and require more, they then pay for the service. And we see this across tech ecosystem a lot, you know, where by, you know, uh, people create products and majority of us have access to those products for free. Some of them charge commission based on the extra services that you use. If you use a Spotify, a Spotify app, for example, you know that you have to subscribe and that's how they end. Next slide, please. If you use an Uber to travel around, you would also understand that they charge you per transaction. For every trip that you make, Uber will charge you. In conclusion, failure in most business ideas can be traced to the lack of a systemic process to get from the vague ideas to implementing you know, those solutions. Oftentimes, the businesses that you see that failed after a while, if you go to investigate, you realize that they had missed out something along the line in the process of either building the foundation or the structure that holds the business or maybe they've not roofed the business which speaks to the mother which means they don't really understand how their business make money and they run out of cash you know or revenue and the business collapses I'm going to be wrapping up my thoughts here and ask if you have questions to so please share them or if there are any points during the presentation that you enjoy, I'd also appreciate you share those aha moments, you know, those nuggets that you picked and I would be happy to take questions at this point. Thank you for your audience thank you for your time and thank you uh the u.s uh, space and the u.s center for the opportunity to share thank you so much mr obina please ladies and gentlemen let's put our hands together for mr obina i think that was a wonderful presentation i've never thought about ideation in the way you have actually presented today we're actually so delighted to have you ladies and gentlemen our time is fast spent uh we'll take questions quickly um for those of you that have your questions please indicate so we can give opportunity to ask questions but we're not going to uh give all of you the opportunity to speak today because of time uh, we could give at least three people. The first three hands will get the opportunity to ask their questions. I, I, and we already have this slide. I will share it in um, our WhatsApp group so that you can uh, see how you can uh, share this and was um, slide to some of your participants in your respective spaces. So quickly, uh, questions, quick questions quickly. We have just five minutes for these questions. Please just you kindly use the virtual hand to indicate if you have any question from any any of our species and we'll give you the opportunity to ask. This city we know America Kona Ikeja. Um, yes, Ikeja, please go ahead, unmute and ask your question. I've seen Ikeja I've seen Ibiokuta. Yes, Ikeja, unmute and ask your question. Why? So I when we're talking about uh, the aggregation life map. We talked about validate. So I have an idea and uh, I want to validate the idea, but I'm not in the space where the idea, the idea is supposed to be implemented in another country. Um, so how do I validate such an idea um, based, that is based on news information that I got and all of that? And 
how do I value? What are the options I have to validate the idea without necessarily um, creating the solution in that space? What option? What other options do I have to validate the idea? Thank you for your question. Um, that's a very important question because in this time that we live in, you know, we refer to the world as a global village. And you don't necessarily have to be in the US to create a solution that can serve people in that you know domain, even though it is you know advisable to understand the terrain. Uh, and I believe that there are informations out there that can feed you, you know, to uh, some insight on that there, uh, uh, you know, around that terrain and on that subject that you're trying to work on. But to validate an idea. Uh, for a market where you're not, you know, uh, physically present in, you can take a different approach, right? One of which is to find close group that are in that, you know, region where you're trying to serve and engage them. You're engaging them to get insights from them, right? To understanding how things really work over there as against you just assuming that you know things work in a certain way and you go on to deploy your idea hey no assumption in this case because oftentimes you know uh we 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 disempower ourselves when we you know work in assumption because you are literally, literally going on an illusion of something that exists, but in real time, that thing may not exist. So find a close group that can help you run that process in your absence and provide you, you know, the adequate feedback or insights that you then would need to move to the next phase. Another way you can use in validating the idea is to engage the targeted customers. If you have your customer uh, uh, target map, you want to find ways to engage them. And you know, uh, means like social media platforms can give you access to those kind of people. Say, so for example, if you are providing save if you want to provide service for professionals, go on LinkedIn and you know message people who fit that target customers category, and that way you engage them, you get the feedbacks that you want, and you can use it to process uh, the idea for Thank you so much. I hope that thank, helps. Yeah, thank you so much for that response. Let's go to Ibiokuta. I think uh, these are just the two questions that I can see here for now. Um, We'll take a bit of now and then. We are going oh, to yeah. share the um, Mr. Webinar's LinkedIn so that for those of you who want to follow him, ask, continue to ask these questions. You can continue after what? this conversation today. Oh, yeah, Biokuta, over to you, please. Oh, I can no. see the Bio in Biokuta, she's just tying her hair. The feeling is up. Please go ahead. Go ahead. Abiyokuta, you're muted. You are muted, please. I am now. Can you hear you? Yes, please go ahead. Good afternoon. Bini, Bini, can you can you mute? Bini will come to you after Abiyokuta. Go ahead, Abiyokuta. Good afternoon, sir, Mr. Obiana or Dr. Obiana, anyone. Uh, my name is Christiana. Please go ahead. Sorry for that. I, yes, I was not around when you are doing the introduction. That's why I didn't know. Maybe it's the Please go ahead. So I have a question, sir. And the question goes thus. You said on oh, how you were teaching us the other time how to write a business plan. And you give us tips. You said it is easy to make one. All it takes is willingness to focus on it. And the second point is there is no one sees fit or correct answer. And the last one is it is not cast in stone or date the document in your I was unable to finish that space because you 
you you next this flight but i didn't really understand can you bring it like break it down how to write a business plan sir let's take the question from Bini that you can take all at once. Okay, that's fine. Yeah, Benin, over to right. ask your question. Nothing. Good afternoon, Obina. Good afternoon. I think I want to quickly reiterate that your presentation was excellent and the delivery was so Thank insightful. You. The ideas that were dropped were like very apt and timely. And I think the engagement is excellent. There's someone that has a question. You think you have a question? No, I'm done. Just thank you. That I can ask. So thank you so much for your presentation. I will be looking forward to getting the slides. If someone has yes. a question. Yes. Just thank you. Me. Thank you, Bini City. Uh, we will send the slide to you. And, and it's LinkedIn as well. The second person is asking a question. Please. I will just be fast. Uh, I listened to your question about uh, business model and business uh, plan. You Thank you, Audible. We can't hear you, Benicity. Some will tell you that you start uh, drafting your design, uh, preparing your model before a plan, which is effective. Is it you know, plan before model or model before plan, or it doesn't matter? Great. Thank you for the question. And thank you for, uh, you know, um, your, your kind uh, uh, statements about my presentation. Um, so there's not one size fits all approach to this, right? And I, I'm reiterating that because the approach that works for me might not necessarily work for someone else. And uh, you shouldn't take a, a, a rigid stand on whether to first work on your business model or your business plan, right? But look at it as you trying to build a house. What do you do first? You build the foundation. After you have laid the foundation, you then begin to erect the pillars, right? And those pillars will be, you know, uh, shielded or will be covered by walls before you roof the building. If you look at the approach of developing a business model, right? You can say that it fits in as the, 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 the roofing of that building, right? Because they come in layers, right? But if you look at your business plan, it dissects many aspects of your business enterprise. So take for example, in trying to build your business plan, you need to go to a segment called market research, right? That in itself can serve as a pillar in your, if, if, if you're comparing, you know, uh, building your business with building a house, a market research is a pillar that has to be erected early on before you roof your building, right? Another part is how you even identify your customers. You have to do all of this before you roof the building. You have to erect all of the pillars necessary to hold the building before your ceiling or you know your decking can then be on it. But if you feel like you want to go through the approach of developing your business model first, it's fine. Just make sure you don't deviate from the basic principles that govern you know uh, these structures so that you don't fall off on your way to building a successful business. Then I come back to, you know, uh, uh, the question from Abi Okuta, which, you know, in some way uh, relates to what I've just explained. Uh, to write a business plan, right, is it, not cast in stone. There is no particular way to do that, you know, uh, 
process. But if you decide today that you want to write a business plan, I would advise you to check some of the online resources available to find existing templates that you can modify to then generate your own. But you can also decide to thoughtfully walk through your business idea to writing out this document. Yeah? Because you have to, at some point, drill down to specific, right? It is in deep thinking of what your idea is about that you can understand what is required for your own business and you can then pen that down. But after you have drafted, you know, uh, the, the first draft of the document, you want to seek either your mentors to help you review it and give you feedback, or you come to, you know, uh, some of the forums that you be, belong to, like the American Corners or American Spaces where you, you know, come for, for, you know, programs like this and ask your colleagues, your friends, to just have a sit-down review sessions with you and you go over the document thank you so take much feedback, you know and you can iterate and you know go over it and thank you, you know, so much. eventually thank you so have much. a document thank you so much mr Obina Chendu. thank you so much ladies and gentlemen let's put our hands together it's been actually a very wonderful afternoon with you today. Uh, we are very deeply sorry that we started very late today. I know a lot of our participants can't get enough of you. Uh, and because of that, I just shared the slide with them uh, on our WhatsApp group. And I also shared your LinkedIn uh, link so they, they can actually uh, link yeah. up with you on LinkedIn as well. Thank you so much. It's been a very wonderful conversation with you this afternoon. We hope that we're going to call you back again and we'll have plenty of time to discuss some of this issue as it relates to business plan and ideation completely. Thank you so much. It's been a wonderful time with you this afternoon. We appreciate you so yeah. much. I have to say a very big thank you to you and we hope that we'll, we'll get you back here again. Thank you so much. We appreciate you. I'll be happy too. Thank you so much for having me. And thank you everyone for joining the session. All right. Bye for now. Bye everyone. Bye -bye. Thank you all across our network. Bye. Thank, you, sir. thank Bye. you all for coming for our program. We appreciate you all. Thank you so much. It was an exciting um, an exciting program for today. And I think we have a program for 3 p.m. Please keep a date with us and don't forget to look at the WhatsApp chat as we continue to update on other programs that are coming up. Bye, everyone. Matt, I can see you. Bye. 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 Yeah.